Throughout the history of the NHL timeline, we've witnessed the evolution of skill and scoring techniques. So much so, that it's reinvented how people view hockey. And in the last several seasons, we have seen a new technique that has truly been game-breaking. What do I mean, you ask? Well, this right here is Connor Bedard. And even though this man has been playing on an island, as a result of scandals and so many injuries, that the Hawks injury reserve had more salary cap than their entire active roster. And this has resulted in Connor Bedard having to battle for every single goal. And in a Panthers-Hawks matchup, Bedard would take the puck away from the defenseman, where he would score at a near impossible angle. The amount of skill, pinpoint precision, to score this goal is mind-blowing. Bedard takes the puck, SCORES! And in a recent Kings-Oilers matchup, we would see McDavid do this. McDavid towards the net, sharp angle shot, and in game number 600 of his NHL career. As McDavid would notice just enough space to fit the puck, where he would snipe it short side. And keep in mind, at this point in the game, the Oilers were down two goals in the second period on the power play. They needed to score here to stay within reach. 99% of the time, McDavid would cycle the puck to create a better scoring chance. And if he goes for the shot and misses, the Kings have a chance to ice the puck and the power play is over. If this was anybody but McDavid, and that player took this shot on the power play, that guy would be benched for the rest of the period or at least taken off the power play. But it's McDavid, and he would score this disgusting goal, which really emphasizes how this scoring technique is not just the shot we see once in a blue moon. No, this impossible angle shot is now a legitimate scoring option. But to be honest, you can expect these goals from the top guys in the league. But here's the thing, it's not only the stars taking these shots. We have seen a massive uptick in these goals from bottom six guys and rookies. 20, 30 years ago, a rookie would be sent to the minors for taking their shot because in the past it was a wasted opportunity but in the modern day we have seen bottom six guys win games from this play in a recent canucks leafs matchup connor garland would win a tough board battle in the corner and at this point, Hoglander has two options. Cycle the puck back down low, or make a pass to the blue line. Where he would decide to make a pass to the blue line, except he would fan on the pass. Here's a shot, Hoglander again! That goes down, and it's 2 nothing Vancouver! And this play right here exemplifies how the new age skill can create plays out of nothing. As Hoglander would curl, notice an inch of open space, and rip it in high short side. Again! Unless you're Sidney Crosby or a superstar in general, in the history of hockey, we have never seen bottom six players consistently score this goal. But because of the evolution of skill and shooting, it has allowed players to score goals from nothing plays. But here's the absurd part. It's not even this snipe that has evolved. No, we've been seeing players all throughout the lineup create a play which involves pecking the puck up the goalie's back if not head. In a Sabres Senators matchup, JJ Baturka would receive a pass from his D-man. And after a one-on-one -on -one in the corner, he would cross the goal line. And you're trying to help defend. Quinn. Tap of that stick score! Shot from along the goal line! And pick the corner off the goalie's head. Are you kidding me? With skill reaching never before seen levels. Not just some of the top guys, but the guys from top to bottom. Well, maybe not guys like Ryan Reeves. Maybe don't include Ryan Reeves in this conversation. You have to feel bad for some of these goalies. The fact that there can be a high scoring chance from anywhere on the ice has to create some serious anxiety issues. On this next play, again, on the power play, McDavid skates behind the net. He would notice the goalie cheating. McDavid banking one home! Put it right off the goaltender! Where he would purposely shoot the puck off the goalie's back for an easy goal. Disgusting! So Some players not only have been scoring these impossible angle goals, they have made it their number one shooting technique. A prime example is the Leon Drysaddle. McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, one time! One-timer drive settle scores for nerves. One-timer drive settle from an impossible angle. And there it is. Similar to how Vetchkin has coined the high circle 1T, Leon Drysaddle has now coined the low circle one-timer. On this play, we can see Edmonton enter the offensive zone. Drysaddle makes room for McDavid by driving through the defenseman, which allows McDavid to take his ice and close in. However, over the line, five on five. Drysaddle, one-timer! 
first score! This entire time, Dry Saddle goes completely unnoticed. Where he would trail off to the corner, and he would find where Grandma keeps the cookies. I love you, Nanny. As Dry Saddle purposely goes to an angle, that is impossible for the goalie to get across. It also helps that McDavid is taking the attention, but if you have this pinpoint precision, and if he can get to his spot, it is a near automatic goal. The evolution of the way to score goals has transformed the way hockey is played today. But here's the thing, throughout each era of hockey, we have seen new techniques introduced that has revolutionized the game. What if it were to tell you that there was a good 20 years where no NHL player was taking a slap shot? Because back in 1937, Rangers forward Alex Shab Shabiki would change the game of hockey forever as he would become the first recorded player to take a slap shot in an NHL game. And Shabiki couldn't fathom the effects that his slap shot would have on the game of hockey, as a slap shot would help guys like Rocky Richard, Bernie Jeffrion, to become the first two teammates to record 50 goal seasons. And this, of course, would lead to guys like Bobby Hall, Stan Mikita, which would be the first players to introduce and popularize the curved stick blade, which in turn improved the effectiveness of a slap shot tenfold. With the flat blade, it was more so a hope and a prayer that your shot would accurately hit the net. With the curved blade, all of a sudden, players had improved accuracy to the extent that they were taking shots from much farther out. To McInnes, he shoots, broke the glass, he broke the glass behind the net, look at that. So what I'm trying to say is that there was a time where the most common shots you see today were a rarity. Like seriously, you can see the same thing about the Michigan goal. Bajard, style scores! Unbelievable! Chris, Trevor. Takes it in behind the net. He scores! A lacrosse goal! we went from never seeing this technique to multiple players scoring a Michigan goal in a week. And when you consider that the Michigan has become massive in the youth hockey scene, I am guaranteeing you that this technique will become common in the next 5 to 10 years. Because once a technique is seen as a legitimate way to score goals on a consistent basis, it will eventually become common. Hell, we can even look back at the spinorama and shootouts. Because back in 2006, during the 11th round of a shootout, the Minnesota Wild would send out Pierre Mark. Bouchard, where this would happen. And he scores! What a play on the spinorama by Bouchard! And the spinorama would become so dominant that it would force the NHL to create a brand new rule. As I think it's amazing how just when you think a sport is done progressing, boom, the evolution of skill takes over and creates goals you never thought could be scored. Well, at least on a consistent basis. And today's video is sponsored by Bet99. How do you feel about that? She loves it. Do you want to test your hockey knowledge with the upside of making some money? Bet99 is the premier sports betting website, a company made by Canadians for Canadians. And if you sign up today, your deposit will be matched up to 600 bucks. I recently took advantage of this bonus offer and turned my initial $300 deposit into two grand. I then went through 1500 bucks and paid for all my expenses that month. In fact, I've now done this three times in the past year. Now, I don't like talking about money and winnings, it's, it's tacky, but if I were to give advice, I think I should have a good track record of winning. Just, just makes sense. And I want to give you guys some advice on how to safely bet with the upside of making some money. Tip number one, only deposit money that you are comfortable losing. Never, I know it's obvious, but never bet the rent money away. You can even start with a $20 deposit and work your way up to a big payout. As I personally like to start low, test my hockey knowledge, and see if I can get a big payout. Tip number two, and this is probably the most important tip for making money, only place bets on leagues, teams, players you are very familiar with. For example, if you watch every game for a team, you're gonna start noticing some tendencies specifically from the players. So I follow the Canucks more than any other team, and I've noticed that when Pedersen has a bad game, he goes pointless, the team loses, he will most likely shoot the puck four to five times the following game, especially if it's against a weaker team. So recently I put 20 bucks on Pedersen to get over 3.5 shots and made 46 bucks back. Not bad. This right here is my number one technique, is trying to understand, I guess, the psyche of players. Again, if you watch a team a lot, you'll start to connect the dots. So if you guys want to email me for some advice, I'll put my email down below. And this promotion does not include the USA or Ontario. Terms and conditions apply. You must be of the legal age of your province. So check out the link down below to take advantage of this great bonus offer, and please bet responsibly.